Hey guys, welcome to the Heart of David. I got an interesting video today. I think that I think that you would be interested. When you hear the title of it, you may not be, but you will be. Um, I'm trying to beat time here because I have a virtual appointment in like 20 minutes, so I want to do this as as streamlined as possible. Hope you guys are all doing well. I feel a bit better today. Um, thanks for asking. I guess before I start this video, I just want to say that, um, you know, usually I cover some, some things and, and my mind's running a thousand miles an hour right now, so I just wanted to mention one thing I don't like about the Christian world of doing videos, doing, doing videos like I'm doing here, the thumbnails, the thumbnails. There's quite a difference between um, there's a big difference between trying to find people who are like pure doing pure topics um, that further the kingdom that further the faith and not to say that people who who do that aren't of the faith it's just I don't understand some of them they're so over the top and excuse me they're only doing it like, you know, they're like Hollywood-like, you know, and maybe I'll get to that another time, but I think you know what I mean, like, here we go, you know, it's time, or, uh, I think you know, it's like, they'll do anything to attract you, and when I look at that, it's like, I have almost a, a thousand subscribers. If I get 10,000, eventually it just starts going up then I would deal with it. I guess I would deal with it. But I'm going to tell you something. That I wouldn't change the way I do things. What I make, it's, there's nothing wrong with making good thumbnails, but you know what I mean about that. It's making things so fantastic that they're, you know, you know exactly where I'm getting at. Like a big picture of Satan with big fangs and, you know, like... Um, I think you, you know what I mean. Anyways, each to their own. I'll, I'll talk about that a different time. I find there's nothing better than finding a, a Christian video that all the person cares about is telling the truth and speaking about Jesus Christ, God, everything. Um... A topic that many people are turned away from, so I'm going to have to read this pretty quickly, to, but in a way you can understand. When I read this, I'm like, what? I had to look for myself on another site, and it's true. You have to follow this. Genealogy. Now, you know, when you read in, in the book of Matthew at the beginning, right, and you see all the genealogy, you see a ton of genealogy, and what is it, chronicles, and... And, you know, when you go through um, the Torah, right, um, there's a lot of genealogy throughout the Old Testament. And to be honest, um, I, I've read all the way through it, but not to the point where I start following it. And, you know, the names that are really pertinent to, to what matters, yes. And I'm sure it goes in some really cool directions, things you wouldn't know. But this one is most important very important I didn't believe this um, this is again from I've been studying from doctrine.org I don't fall in line with everything this man says but this opened my eyes to Paul's gospel and what it really truly means and who the gospels were written for who the new covenant was written for all these things are so important for you to know So, I'm, I'm going through all the covenants of Israel. They weren't given to us, they were given to Israel. And this is the Davidic, I don't know if I'm starting in the right place, but I'm just going to start from here. 
God promised to establish the, uh, the throne of David forever from the tribe of Judah. It too was a sovereignly established covenant and amplified the seed of the Abrahamic covenant. It amplified it. The land of Israel promised in the Abrahamic covenant. It's also mentioned in verse 10 and 12. Uh, verse 10 of Second uh, Samuel 7 in which God promised to plant Israel permanently in the land. Jeremiah 24, 32, Amos 9, verse 15. The Davidic covenant was intimate in, in Jacob's blessing of his son. Before his death, David was not identified, uh, but his tribe was. Jacob recognized that rulership came from Judah. The text reads, Judah, your brothers shall praise you. You shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's son shall bow down to you. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey. My son, you have gone up. He couches. He, li I guess maybe it's crouches. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who dares to rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. He ties his foal to the vine, and his donkey's colt to the choice vine. He washes his garments in wine, and his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are, uh, are dull from wine, and his teeth white from milk. Genesis 49, 8-12. So listen to this. This is going to blow your mind. Pardon me a second. Give me a sec. You're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this unless you look yourself. I had to check this and it is true. So, God promised to preserve David's throne forever. Right? Did he? He did, he did in, the, in the Davidic covenant. The king of Israel had to be a firstborn from the bloodline of David. There was a problem, however. God had a blood curse. Wow, he had a blood curse on Coniah or Jeconiah. Remember that Jeconiah, you know, right, Nebuchadnezzar? Around the time when they were taken. One of the kings in David's line, uh, because of his wickedness, Jeremiah 22, 24 to 30. As I live, saith the Lord, uh, through Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were the signet upon my right hand, yet yet would I pluck these thence. I, I never read, read King James Version. I always read New King James Version because I don't like those thence in this. I don't. I don't. And I will give thee into the hand of them that seek thy life and into the hand of those who uh, thou fearest. I think I should go a little further. Even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, in the hand of the Chaldeans. And I will cast thee out, thy mother, um, and thy mother that bear thee into another country, where you are not born, and you shall die. I'm trying to see if there's a. You'll be childless. You will be childless. Um, o earth, earth, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord: Write thee this man childless, O man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper. So this is the line of the kings from Judah sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. Um, that was Jeremiah 22. Yeah, I'm getting cutting it close here. Kings 24, 5 to 15. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Jehoiakim slept with his father's and Jehoiachin, his son reigned in his stead, and the king of Egypt uh, came not any more out. Okay, so let's just keep going. Joseph, Mary's husband, was from this Solomon line. Okay? Joseph was. You know, Joseph, Jesus' father. I'll get to that in a second. 
if Jesus had been the biological offspring of Joseph, he wouldn't have qualified for kingship since God had cursed this line. Wow, I am like, what? I hadn't heard this before. How did God solve this problem? David had another son, Nathan. This line ended in Heli. So if you look to, I'm going to put this in the description box. You can go in the, um, yeah, it'll go right to here. But go down to the Davidic covenant to find this. I would read all the covenants and what they mean and who they were for. And they will still be fulfilled when they accept the Messiah. Luke 3.23. So this says this in the New Testament. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age being as was supposed, the son of, as supposed, that says in brackets, the, as supposed in the King James Version, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. Wow. Heli had no sons. Heli had three daughters. Um, one was named Mary. Could daughters have inheritance rights? Wow, this changes the picture, right? The answer is not normally, but Mary was eligible to do a case brought by the daughters of Zelophehad to Moses, so way back. I'm like, wow, the riches of God, right? The riches of God. He's a mathematical genius because he, he set it up, this single case from Moses, so that Jesus could could so it could go smoothly um, was brought by uh, the daughters of Zelophehad to Moses in this case Moses allowed the daughters inheritance rights if there were no sons and the daughter married within her tribe numbers 26 33 and Zelophehad the son of Hefer had no sons but had daughters and the names of the daughters were uh, Mela, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and, and Terza. Sounds like car brands. So anyways, it's in Numbers 27, 36, Joshua 17, 3 to 6. So in Joshua 17, 3 to 6, but Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, had no sons but daughters. And these are the names of his daughters, and it gives it all again. And they came near before Eliezer, the priest, and before Joshua. It's also in Chronicles 7.15. So, let's go. Mary, as it happened, fit the requirements, Mary, Jesus' mother. She fit the requirements perfectly. She was a daughter, had no brothers, and married Joseph, a man from the same tribe as she, the tribe of Judah. Joseph legally adopted Jesus. So there's your answer, right? Things you wouldn't know. Thank God for revelation, right? Just keep building your knowledge and wisdom. Joseph legally adopted Jesus, which uh, meant he had the royal right of the firstborn. Mary, because of her uh, uncursed bloodline, gave Jesus the legal right, um, legal blood right to the throne. The virgin birth of our Lord, it was just like like Noah, eh? He was perfect in his generations. It just means his bloodline wasn't mixed like everyone else was in, in those days. Mary, because of her uncursed bloodline, uh, gave Jesus a legal right to the throne. The virgin birth of our Lord was essential to the fulfillment of the Davidic covenant. For Jesus himself will fulfill the promise of the covenant as he reigns as king upon the earth. Zechariah 14.9 And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord and his name one. Pretty cool, eh? So that's what I have to say. I have an appointment right now. Uh, do you want to join in it? I won't let the person know. I'll just let you guys watch. No. Anyways, um... I actually encourage you to read um, all these covenants to see what they all mean, because if you do, then you'll understand so much more. On this site, doctrine.org, if you want to know 
that which gospel was for us, Paul's gospel. It's for everybody. But we're waiting for the Jews to accept the Messiah so everything else can be fulfilled. Read covenant theology. Um, where is it here? Covenant theology, It's so when you go on this page, on the right side, there's a whole lot of articles. There's a lot of them, very interesting ones. Go to Covenant Theology and the New Covenant, read the whole thing. I guarantee you will have a different knowledge about everything. It will turn everything on your face unless you understand it already. It is the right way. Like you could, you could be reading the Bible for 10 years and never know this. That's why I was so shocked. And uh, then I would I read Covenant and Theology first, and I did videos on this, so you can watch my videos. Just look back. It was two parts. I find it's much better to read it um, to help you remember. Then after that, read the Covenants of Israel, and you'll have a great understanding, a good a good knowledge base of 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 what this all means. Thanks, guys, for watching. Um, God bless to everyone. If uh, people prayed for the things that I went through, thank you. I feel a bit better today. Um, uh, you know what I'd say? Without God, if you go through traumatic things, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I have no idea because it seems to go way up and way down. It comes unexpectedly. Things start coming to me. I could be fine like this and like 10 minutes later something could just happen. But I'll tell you that if you're going through trauma, you've been through trauma, you're being through whatever you're going through, I'm telling you, you have to put your faith in God. There is no other way. And I've explained through my life, guys, I have 12 different pain conditions of which eight are very painful conditions by accepting faith in God studying his word and all that I claim that he to have him constantly on my mind took away about 10% of my pain because of faith in a different and a new kingdom that I believe is coming close he can help wash those feelings of shame and, and guilt and and those traumatic feelings away. I guarantee you. Anyways, it's not to. It's also not to just supplant for for not getting help. It's good to get help too. So do both. See you later.